Okay. We began a uh, midweek uh, sermon series called Meeting Jesus, and, and we spoke about some people who met Christ in the New Testament. The first week we talked about a crippled man who met Jesus at the Pool of Bethesda. And when he met Jesus, he was healed. Last week we spoke about the rich tax collector named Zacchaeus, the one who climbed the tree. He climbed the tree to the Kalle Christos. But what he needed most was not just to see Jesus, he needed salvation. And that day when he made the... Uh, he made that effort that he called Christos. He didn't get just to see Jesus, but he received salvation. And the Bible says that Jesus himself went to his house and offered him salvation. And listen to me tonight. When you meet Jesus, your life is never the same again. Your life is supposed to change when you meet Christ. Say amen if you believe that. That's right. So tonight we're talking about another person who met Jesus. This person is known as the adulterous woman. Now, Kacha Juvli, she also needed something from Christ. And what she needed is something that all of us need in our lives. And that is forgiveness. Can everyone say forgiveness? forgiveness. No, no, everyone needs to say forgiveness. forgiveness. Forgiveness, church, is the most important thing that is needed in our lives. You might think tonight because you need healing, you might think tonight the most important thing is what you need is money. Sometimes you might think that you need the most important thing is peace or joy or happiness. But no, those are all good things. But the most important thing that you need is forgiveness from God. Can you say amen tonight? Because tonight? let me tell you why. Because apart from forgiveness, you have no part with God. Without forgiveness, you have no part with Christ. But once you are forgiven, once you are made holy, once you are made clean, once you are made righteous because of the blood of Jesus, now you can have peace. Now you can have joy. Now you can have a relationship with God. Can everyone say amen to that tonight? And that's what we need the most. And that's what this Gachar Jubli needed the most. Now, forgiveness, church, has been provided for through the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, no matter how hard you try on your own, you're never good enough to be forgiven. Some anus genin that they can earn God's forgiveness. You can't earn God's forgiveness. It's got to be given to you by His grace. Look what Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says. So He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave the precious blood of Jesus that had to be and because of that blood church the person who received Jesus Christ as his lord savior and master receives the forgiveness of God can you say amen to that amen, amen. Psalms 32 verse 1 and 2 says this oh what joy for those who disobedience is forgiven whose sin is not put whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt. Can you guys give God glory for that tonight? Come on. There's great joy. Because He washed our sins, because He made us clean, He restored our joy. Thank you, Lord, for that. So when a person meets Jesus, Jesus changes everything. So let's look at the story of the adulterous woman. It's found in John chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, we're going to read. We're going to read all 11 verses of this story. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but earlier the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered as he sat down and taught them. This was a normal routine for Jesus. Every time Jesus would go to the temple, the crowds would gather and he would start to preach and teach them. Verse 3, Motol Kadam. And he, as he was speaking, the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. 
they put her in front of the crowd. Now, most likely, church, what happened? A lot of religious leaders, the Pharisees, as you could day for this perfect opportunity, they have been bujene around. They have been kakala juvla angla Christo. Verses four and five. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? Hmm. Kakalamanus were trying to get Jesus in trouble. They were trying to put Jesus in a catch-22 situation. In other words, it was a damned if you do and damned if you don't. If Jesus was to pronounce and say, yes, the law of Moses says stone her, she is guilty, go ahead and stone her. Well, two things would have happened. Pay attention, please. First of all, he would have lost the respect of all the people because now Jesus is bringing condemnation on somebody. Number two, the other thing that would have happened, if he announced the stone this woman, he would have been broke, breaking the Roman law. And if he broke the Roman law, they would have killed him for it. But then on the other hand, if he said, set her free, let her go, I forgive her he would be violating the law of Moses. Because the law of Moses says that if someone is caught in the act of adultery, they should be stoned. Is everyone still with me tonight? Say amen if you're still with me tonight. All right. There's a reason why I'm saying this. Because on the surface, this is a big problem. No matter what Jesus says at this point, so God will condemn him one way or another. But all of this was made, was, this trap was designed to get Jesus in a jam. But listen to me tonight, and I want to make this clear. I'm going to make this very clear to you. Gentlemen, please, on that side, please pay attention. Very important. There is not a question that Jesus cannot answer. And there's not a problem that Jesus cannot solve. Say amen if you believe that tonight. And no matter what you're facing tonight, no matter how difficult of a situation you're in, or a problem you're against, or your back is against the wall, remember something, Jesus Christ has an answer for your problem. Can you give Him glory for that tonight? <laughs> Verse 6 says this, They were trying to trap Him into saying something they would use against Him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. Listen to me. Kakalamanus, kayasarde kakalajuvla in the act of adultery, they really truly wasn't being holy. It's not that they were really concerned about the law of Moses. It's not that they were really concerned that this woman was violating the law. They were using the Kalajuvla for their own purpose. They were using this situation to try to trap Jesus. Pay attention to what I'm telling you tonight. You see, there's a lot of people out there today that as soon as they hear something bad about someone, they start exposing it. They start talking about it. They start slandering people. They start telling the world, "Yoi, asunen sokerda kacha, asunen sokerda kako, asunen sopenda kako, asunen kai golo kako vai kacha." And they do it for the purpose to act holy. Are you guys following along tonight? What I'm saying? But listen to me. Deep down inside, the real reason is not because they're upset because somebody violated the law of God. They're just trying to make themselves feel better about their own sin. Because I found out something about people. People. I manus kaisa lumako gundo, I lumako ilo. Especially ajez. People da by the kan, I tulion kan osunen na sulpa varakastels. 
And they can't wait to talk about it. And they can't wait to expose it. And they can't wait to slander. And they can't wait. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in this church tonight? Because let me tell you what a godly person does. Let me tell you what a true person who was born again. Let me tell you a person who the Holy Spirit of God is filling their life will do. Instead of slandering, instead of gossiping, they pray. They pray. And then they go to that person and they go talk to that person one to one. And privately, and yes, sometimes we have to rebuke a brother or a sister when we hear or find out something about them. But you don't do it publicly, you do it privately, one-on-one -on -one with that person. And you encourage that person. And you pray with that person. See, unfortunately, we're the best at killing our own wounded. Instead of putting a bandage on someone, instead of helping someone, we start digging a hole. We're ready to bury him. Does anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? And you see, that's exactly what these Pharisees and these Sadducees were doing. She probably was not the only person in all of Jerusalem or in all of Israel that was an adulteress. She probably was not. Uh, probably a lot of them that were accusing her were probably adulterers themselves. But you see, Budmanus try to expose what other people do to make their sin better than somebody else's. I mean, we put sin on a, on, a, on a scale. We like to put sin on a scale and we like to weigh it out. And, 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 and we have the attitude to say, my sin is better than their sin. My sin is not as bad as theirs is. Listen to me. You know what the Bible says? For all have fallen short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. And in the eyes of God, sin is sin. Say amen if you believe that. Sin is sin. God doesn't put it on a scale. How much sin is bad in the eyes of God, even one, even one is bad in God's eyes. Verse 7. They kept demanding an answer, so he said again, so he stood up again and said, all right, but let the one who never sinned throw the first stone. Okay, she deserves to be stoned. You're right. Jesus was not covering up her sin. Jesus was not denying that she was an adulteress. Jesus said she was. She, he agreed with them. But Penelina, Yekana Tumende, Tenamena Besachale, Tenamena Dosale, Shudeno Purvobach, throw the first stone. Which one of you are perfect? Which one of you are sinless? Which one of you has never did anything wrong in your life? Throw the first stone. We need to be very careful, church, on how we judge others. Say amen if you believe that. We need to be very careful. There's an old saying, don't throw bricks or stones when you live in what? A glass house. We need to be very careful on how we judge people. It's very be careful on how we judge other people's sin. We need to be very careful on how we condemn others. Because the truth of the matter is, none of us are perfect. Nobody is. Verses 8 and 9. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one. Beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Okay. 
Great. Yek po yek, peradei pengabach, one by one, and they started walking away. Jesus got them in a jam. Jesus put them in his place, in their place. But here's the question tonight. It's the question I think every single one of us asked before. What did Jesus write on the ground? Well, to be honest with you, we don't know. I have a guess, but I don't know for sure. But I can tell you for sure that what Jesus wrote was enough to get them to walk away from this woman. So let's see. What could have been something that Jesus wrote that day? Well, they were using the law of Moses to condemn her. Is that right, church? Say amen if that's right. They were using the law of Moses to condemn her. But I want you to see a verse of Scripture In Exodus 31, 18. See, another time God wrote something with His finger. And let's see what He wrote. When the Lord finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, He gave him two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant written by the finger of God. What did God write with His finger? He wrote the law, the Ten Commandments. And most likely, church, what... What Jesus wrote on the floor that day, he started writing down the Ten Commandments. Yek po yek. Yek po yek. There's an old saying, when you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. What are some of the Ten Commandments? You shall not have any other gods before me. You shall not commit murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet, which means you should not be jealous of your neighbor's house. Uh, you should honor your father and your mother. And yes, you shall not commit adultery. Jesus probably wrote down all the commandments. And what he was doing when he wrote down the commandments, and he wrote down this, And when they saw their sin, they got convicted. Listen to me tonight. We need God to show us our sin before we go try to condemn somebody else's for their own sin. Jesus said, take the log out of your own eye. Didn't he say that? Before you go take the speck out of somebody else's. Did Jesus say that, yes or no? That's right, exactly what it means. And what that means is, before you go try to correct somebody else. Yek po yek, they dropped their stones and they walked away from this woman. And in verses 10 verses and 11, look what it says. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord. She said, and Jesus said, neither do I. Neither do I. In other words, I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you. You guys need to get excited about that because that's what Jesus is saying for you tonight. I don't condemn you. Jesus did not condemn this woman. Now, let me make something clear tonight. I don't want you to leave tonight not knowing this truth, and don't misunderstand. It's not that Jesus did not condemn the sin. The sin was wrong. Adultery was wrong. And Jesus did not condone the sin. Cheap and out, Cristo. It's okay to be an adulterer. I'm just going to look the other way. No, not at all. Her sin required death. Because that's what the Bible taught. And Jesus did not violate the law of Moses. So someone had to die because of her sin. But thank you, Jesus, 
Somebody did die because of her sin. Because just a few months later, Jesus went on the cross and took her sin upon Himself and He died on the cross for her sin. And listen to me tonight. Tonight Jesus is telling you the same thing. I don't condemn you. Why? Because I took upon Myself your sin and I went on the cross and I died for you. And because of the death of Jesus Christ and because Lao Cristo obezach pepeste, you and I stand forgiven. You and I stand clean. You and I are made holy in the eyes of God. Can you give God glory for that tonight? So he didn't make an excuse for her sin. He said, I don't condemn your sin. I don't condemn you. He didn't say, I don't condemn your sin. I don't condemn you. Let me make something clear tonight. Sin is wrong in the eyes of God. And it will never be right. Even the smallest sin that you think is okay was the sin that put Jesus Christ on the cross. It was the sin that made Jesus go on the cross and die a vicious, ugly death. And He was crucified. And His blood was shed. And He died even for the sin that we make excuses for. So Jesus never excused sin. But thank you, Jesus, He didn't condemn us when you turn to Him. I don't condemn you. What that means is God has given us grace. That's what it means. It's God's grace. What is grace? Something you don't deserve. That day she deserved to die, but grace says no. I won't condemn you. I'm not going to condemn you, but I'll give you grace. That's what he gave her that day. In Psalms 103 verse 10 says this, He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us, repay us according to our iniquities. Thank you, Jesus, for that. God does not repay us as our sins deserve. Thank you, Lord, for that. He forgives our iniquities. But you see, that's only part of the story, church. You see, a lot of people read the verse of Scripture and they say, it says, no, Lord. And he says, neither do I. I don't condemn you. And Bun Manu stopped right there. But Jesus didn't stop there in his conversation. Okay, yet he said them too. I'm forgiven you. Then he goes and tells her, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Say amen if you understand that tonight. Go and sin no more. What does that mean? It means very simple, go and sin no more. Jesus does not forgive our sin so that we can continue living in it. Jesus does not look the other way from our sin. Yes, He forgives us. Yes, He washes us. Yes, He cleanses us. But now He gives us grace. And that grace tells us to say no to sin. Because Christ forgave our sin does not give us the right to continue living in it. But He tells us, go and sin no more. Listen to me tonight. God's grace will not leave you where it found you. Because of God's grace and because of God's love, they can continue living in disobedience and continue living in sin, and it's okay. No, it's not okay. God did not give us grace to continue living in sin, but He gave us grace to set us free from sin. That's why He gave it to us. I Penelica, go and sin no more. Church, listen to me tonight. And I end here. God forgave our sins. O Manus that came to Jesus Christ and accepts Him as His personal Lord and Savior, confesses your sin, the Bible says that God forgives our sins. The Bible says He is faithful and just and He forgives us of all of our unrighteousness. But He forgives our sin. But He also empowers us to say no to sin. And He empowers us to walk away from sin. 
that day yet the sardella juvla but then penelica go and sin no more that is the message tonight for us also he forgives our sin and he's telling us walk away from the sin amen kudasazi warbar